one of the most vital components of our research last summer was an MISW system. MISW stands for Multi-Channel Analysis of Surface Waves. This system allowed us to track geotechnical and geomechanical properties of the permafrost in Utkiagvik so we can calculate the ground strength of the permafrost and determine how permafrost is being affected by climate change. Before we took our equipment to Alaska, we practiced with a few test runs. The test runs help us ensure the equipment is running smoothly and understand how each piece of equipment works. To begin, we swung the sledgehammer onto a strike plate. The sledgehammer produced surface waves across the soil. The sledgehammer has a cable connected to it called a trigger. As the hammer struck the soil, the trigger recorded the start time of the seismic waves. We set up MISW tests in multiple locations to get an accurate depiction of the ground strength in Utkiagvik. We stack three shots from the same location to increase data accuracy. We had to wait until the three shots were processed in each location. time-consuming part of the MISW tests is moving the cable through the line and connecting the geophones. Geophones are receivers that convert the velocities of surface waves into voltages. The geophones were spread out evenly between each other using the tape measure. They were connected to each other by cables that sent the voltages to a seismograph. The seismograph can record vibrations from 24 channels, so we used 24 channels on one line to record vibrations in seismic waves. A seismograph recorded the voltages and sent them to a computer where the surface wave velocities could be processed in digital format. After collecting and pre-processing seismic data, we calculate dispersion images representing the phase velocity of propagated waves in different frequencies based on the dispersive feature of surface wave data. Then, we invert the extracted dispersion curve to build shear wave velocity models. Shear wave velocity tells us how dense the soil is. This measurement can help us determine how strong the permafrost is in Utkiagvik, so we can consider how permafrost strength will be affected by rising temperatures. We can use the data we gathered from the MASW tests to compare with and validate the DAS results we will get later. Then, the DAS results can give us year-round data about the changing permafrost properties. As we continue our research, the MASW results will be crucial to our understanding of how permafrost will be affected by climate change and how the civil infrastructure in the Arctic must adapt to these changes.